Support WrestleTalk! Support each other. On the 15th of June, it was revealed a WWE talent had tested positive for coronavirus, leading to the company cancelling all their tapings for the day and finally rolling out testing for coronavirus specifically for everyone working at the Performance Center. And as was infamously once said, testing more is probably going to reveal more positive cases. It's all your fault, testing! And just over a week later, on the 24th, it was reported up to two dozen people had also contracted the virus. And now, following the latest batch of testing, even more positive WWE cases have been confirmed. Pro Wrestling Sheet is now reporting that at least 30 people who have been at the Performance Center in the last three weeks have tested positive for coronavirus, with Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio stating that number might be closer to 40 as of a week ago. The report goes on to say that WWE have administered nearly 1,500 tests since they began testing for COVID-19 last month. The company have previously only been taking people's temperatures and asking them to fill out a questionnaire, far behind the safety precautions taken by the likes of the UFC and AEW. Along with actually testing for coronavirus specifically now, WWE have also implemented fines for any crowd members or production staff who don't wear a mask inside the performance center, with $500 for a first offense and $1,000 for a second offense. This is the complete opposite of the company's stance from just a few weeks ago, where they were reportedly allowing friends and family into the tapings where executive producer Kevin Dunn allegedly told them not to wear masks because people who wear masks aren't real fans. Yeah. Rey Mysterio. And now several reports have come out that might reveal why Vince McMahon changed his mind. According to WrestlingNews.co, two WWE wrestlers threatened to sit out the most recent set of tapings unless a mandate was issued to have the fans, developmental wrestlers, wear masks inside of the performance center. Fightful Select then added that a wrestler who had just returned from hiatus voiced concerns to McMahon about people within the company not taking social distancing and masks seriously. It was after this wrestler spoke to McMahon that the changes were put into effect, and it seems to have quelled the numerous reports of unrest and frustration in the WWE locker room. WrestlingNews.co is reporting this has helped to calm some of the concerns among the wrestlers, and that the two wrestlers who were planning on sitting out the tapings are expected back for the next set of tapings. WWE and McMahon are now seemingly taking their performers' concerns seriously amidst the growing case slowed in the United States. As they've not just cancelled plans for having fans in attendance for Raw and SmackDown tapings in late July, PW Insider is reporting that McMahon has finally conceded that SummerSlam won't be able to take place in front of a live audience in Boston as was originally planned, and it will now be held inside the Performance Center. And SummerSlam isn't the only thing Vince has had to change. After Charlotte Flair was kayfabe injured by Nia Jax on Raw, we now have haven't seen the Omni Flare. on TV for a whole week. She's reportedly on a hiatus for the rest of the year so she can have surgery, but now her original plans have been revealed. Dave Meltzer is reporting Charlotte's push was meant to continue with a long-term feud with Asuka over the summer. This is apparently why she was so protected in NXT without ever taking a pinfall loss. So all of NXT was fed to Charlotte to build up Asuka. We wanted a stronger Asuka, but at what cost? At least it's created a much better women's division on the main roster, which I'm going to praise while reviewing last night's episode of Raw in about five minutes. Thanks for your support on Patreon, the roller coaster, Robert Acosta, and don't have a Shane Cowley, man. Drew McIntyre opened the show asking Dolph Ziggler to pick their championship match stipulation at the horror show at Extreme Rules at AOL.com, which was answered by Dolph Ziggler's beautiful hair. It is so incredibly luscious. For the mind games, lols, Dolph is only going to reveal their stipulation at the horror show at Extreme Rules at AOL.com at angelfire.lycos itself. Instead, for right now, he's got a ghost of McIntyre's past. The recently fired Heath Slater 
whose non-compete clause expires in under two weeks' time. Slater is often regarded as a comedy player, with his most notable acts being 3MB and the I've Got Kids tag team with Rhino. But underpinning both those gimmicks, the reason why they worked is Heath's genuine ability to emotionally connect with the audience. Just like his over too soon referee gimmick, Slater cut a great promo on how Drew only called him once after he was fired several months ago. This ain't a gimmick, he's got kids and he's lost his job. He goaded McIntyre into one last match, where Drew sensitively annihilated him in seconds with a claymore. Heath's last WWE appearance is a microcosm of his whole career there, a bloody excellent enhancement talent. It was a brilliant piece of booking too, somehow making Drew even more over as a babyface despite knocking the head off his best friend who's leaving the company. McIntyre chased off Ziggler's beatdown afterwards and embraced Heath Swallater one last time. My only criticism is that I now want Heath versus Drew over Dolph. Slater looked in incredible shape though, so expect him to turn up for Impact Wrestling at Slammiversary in two weeks' time. Sasha Banks and Bayley appeared on their fifth consecutive WWE program after featuring on every SmackDown, Raw and NXT over the last two weeks. It's weird how we don't get as tired of characters we actually like. Then it turned out this episode's theme wasn't Championship Monday. After Heath, it was Wrestlers who are leaving the company turning up for a few more matches. Kyrie Sane returned to WWE in full-on babyface mode to fight Banks in a really fun match, where Bailey caused the DQ. Caruso alert! Asuka and Kyrie Sane then challenged Banks and Bailey to the women's tag team titles next week through the medium of recorder. <laughs> After Alistair Black was taken out backstage, awesomely wearing a lucha mask, Kevin Owens also made his WWE return after not wanting to work during a pandemic to host an interview segment with Seth Rollins, where Seth pointed out that even though KO won at WrestleMania, he's not done anything since because of his ankle injury and God not wants to work in a pandemic. Rey Mysterio came out to accept Seth's match challenge for the horror show at Extreme Rules at AOL.com at AngelFire.Lycos at Live.co.uk, with the stipulation being decided by the tag match winner here. With Black Kayfabe injured, Owen stepped up for a decent match, which led to the babyfaces winning after Dominic tried to rip out Murphy's eyeball from its socket. Classic babyface move. As was reported, Raven challenged Rollins to an eye versus eye match, where he promised to rip Seth's eye out of its socket again. Should have been an I quit match. Destino. MVP and Bobby Lashley just get better and better every week, especially with commentary now calling them the CEOs of the Hurt Business, which is so incredibly badass, where they unveiled the new US title design, which was actually really good looking. I'm not used to liking a new WWE title design. This is weird. Lashley crowned MVP in advance, but they were interrupted by Apollo's friends, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. This led to a tag team match with MVP still wearing his suit, which was infinitely more intimidating than Baron Corbin doing the same, which Lashley won with a spear. After pep talks backstage from the actual stars, star of the Big Show show, The Big Show, leading Viking Raiders against Randy Orton's gang of sexy men, Angel Garza and Andrade. Orton was yet again excellent, being genuinely scary as his team's kind of coach, which built to him eventually getting an arc KO on Eric for the win. Happy having a baby day, Eric. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm so into Randy Orton versus Big Show in 2020. It's unfortunately at the expense of the tag division, but you've got to take these wins where you can. MVP sowed the seeds of dissension between Cedric Alexander and Ricochet next, saying him and Lashley are in the hurt business, while Cedric is in the catering business watching Ricochet be better than him. An absolutely brilliant line. And after Peyton Royce squashed Ruby Riot last week, Billy Kay squashed her here. The main event for Championship Monday Round 2 was SmackDown Champion Bayley versus Raw Champion Asuka, the latest example of how WWE is doing the best job anywhere of elevating their women's division over any other major promotion. And it wasn't just one feud at play here. In some very neat interconnected booking from Pritchard, Nikki Cross was out on 
commentary too, despite two security guards telling her she shouldn't be there, building her title match with Bailey. She was soon thrown out though in Bailey and Asuka's terrific 15 minute match, with a pace that never let up, thankfully and rightfully going against the short match rule that had been part of the first weeks in the Pritchard McMahon run. And it got even better with an excellent finishing sequence. First Asuka hit a crazily stiff back spinning elbow on Bailey's jaw, and then there was a frantic series of distractions and kickouts, with a surprise Nikki return putting off Bailey so Asuka could roll her up. Asuka, Kyrie, Bailey, Banks, Nikki Cross, this is the women's division we wanted after last April. Not Becky just feuding with Charlotte and Lacey Evans, and while they will be missed, Lynch and Flair stepping back is finally allowing it to happen. That was this week's Raw in about five minutes. Do you think WWE has the best women's division in the world right now? Let me know in the comments where I'll be replying at The Horror Show, at Extreme Rules, at AOL.com, at AngelFire.Lycos, at Live.co.uk, at Find me on Tout. This was yet another very solid episode of Raw, elevated significantly by the women's division, which isn't just putting on great matches with interesting storylines, the characters are also connecting too. This week's Raw is core. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our other wrestling YouTube channel, Parts Fun Known, as we've just passed 100,000 subscribers. If you haven't already, go over there now to watch Adam Blompier's fantasy booking videos, Laurie's Wrestling Explained series, Quizzlemania, and more. And get yourself a PFK t-shirt by clicking on our new merch shelf just below this video. And watch Louis Dangor's interview with Brian Pillman Jr., who has just been announced for AEW by clicking the video on the right, and Rey Mysterio's WWE contract has expired. Click the video beneath that to learn more. I've been Ollie Davis, and that was Wrestling.